Hey guys, I'm Colin. I'm the owner of Tilt Scooters. We're out here with the Tilt crew at the vault. Uh, we have the tour bus out here right now. Uh, we built this bus up in Michigan and we decided to hit the road and travel across the country, kind of document what scootering was like across the country. And we're going to release a video of our travels this fall. We're going to check out the exterior. I'll kind of take you through what it took to make a school bus into the tour bus. There's a couple things that aren't done yet, but we think it turned out pretty sweet. Starting with the exterior, uh, we decided to what's considered resheeting or tinning over all of the windows and then we put in new windows, new door, and then legally speaking you have to actually paint a bus because yellow is reserved for school buses. So we had to paint the whole bus which was a ridiculous amount of sanding and work. Ours is bigger. <laughs> On the wheels, we have these red flags. They're wheel checkers to make sure uh, safety purpose if any uh, lug nuts are getting loose. And then long term, we might put some bigger off-roading tires on it because I like to camp, don't want a flat tire, and we can maybe take scootering places it's never been. Do you want to do a check out the garage? Yeah. yeah. Are you just rolling constantly? Yeah. Sick. Because we're a scooter crew, we have the garage. And this is just a place to keep scooters, boards for filming, the Jenny, Long term, we'll probably put a bunch more stuff up here. We have a light in case it's dark. Tilt Life tag, check us out on Instagram, of course. Each side of the bus, we cut into the side of the bus and mounted these toolboxes. These are for tools in case we have a problem on the road as well as more safety equipment, things like that. So, oh, it's all gonna spill out. So we have all the tools. We have onboard electrical so we can things, run things like a grinder, we can cut bars, we can fix things on the bus. These are external outlets. We can plug something into the bus and run it off of the bus with this yellow one. This one actually allows us to plug the bus in. It will charge all the batteries on, on board, as well as if we're parked at a place with power, we can run things all night without worrying about draining the batteries. Our artist Mike put on a couple of decals. We have Tilt Life on both sides of the bus, on the front and back. There's Tilt logos right along the top. Oh, it doesn't feel too broken. Oh, it's broken. <laughs> we made the exhaust go out the side so that we could put water tanks in the back eventually uh, and go on longer trips. All right, you guys want to check out the inside? So inside, we did all sorts of work. The first thing you'll notice is two front seats. We wanted to be able to have a co-pilot up here because when we're trying to get spot to spot, it's good to have. It was pretty difficult to do figuring out seat belts, regulations, uh, but both of these seats are on air, like semi-truck seats, so you just kind of bounce as you go up and down the road. So each person is kind of bouncing at a different uh, pace. It's, it's pretty funny looking from the front. We have the basic dash, reverse camera because it's hard to see out, and then the stereo actually runs from something called the house battery, so that no matter how much you play the radio or when you're parked or have the backup camera on or anything else, you don't end up killing your starting batteries, so you're never dead on the road. This bus has a whole new electrical system. It's kind of like under the under the bones, or it's in the bones of everything. Uh, so from the alternator, it actually charges two sets of batteries. One of them is strictly for the engine, and then one of them is underneath this bench, and it's a huge battery pack. It takes up almost the whole seat here. Um, and th there's the battery pack. There's something called an inverter, which converts power to AC. And it's all medical grade components that we can plug in our cameras, computers, anything that we need to do on the road without blowing up any of our devices. We couldn't figure out how to put a table here in front of the bench with uh, legs going down and still being able to get in and out. So we had this crazy idea to just build a table from the ceiling. So one night, Chris Martin and I stayed at the shop until like one or two in the morning, fabricating all these mounts and welding this thing up. Over here, we have what we would consider the kitchen area. We have a toolbox mounted into the frame as a set of drawers. We have a cabinet here, and then a 12 volt DC refrigerator that runs off of the battery pack that's over here. So we can keep all our food and drinks cold, kind of make whatever food we need. Long term, we'd like to put a sink in here, water, uh, this closet area will eventually maybe be a bathroom, we're not sure. Um, and then in the back, we did some preparation. We put big water tanks underneath so that we can long-term add water to it. This is just kind of a closet area where everybody keeps their gear, a little bit of a disaster. Uh, we have more tools in here, spare parts, uh, frisbees for fun, cleaning, just basic, basic needs. We only gave ourselves six weeks to build this thing, which most people take years when they build a conversion vehicle like this. Uh, so we didn't have time to finish everything. The bunk area, Every, all the guys are sleeping on air pads. We don't get mattresses in here, uh, but it's, it's sufficient for now. And I'm not in it for a long time sleeping back here, so it's chill. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to travel in my personal time as well, so I made it so that these upper bunks come out and uh, 
then the bottom one converts into a queen bed so that you can have only one bed back here and a little bit more room. A couple funny things that we didn't have time to finish before, besides paint and some trim, there's a big square piece back there and another one on the front that was supposed to be air conditioning. So we insulated the entire bus, we took it down to the frame, had it professionally spray foam insulated, and then didn't have time to put air conditioning in, so me and this guy back here are both just sweating like crazy, and all the guys on the road, because it gets so boiling hot in here. It's, yeah, it's hot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Unfinished. It feels like a school bus. Like, it also drives like one, and everybody always thinks school drivers, like school bus drivers, like horrible and jerky, and school buses are horrible and jerky. So there's a very good reason why your school bus driver was like <laughs> has air brakes and air ride suspension so every once in a while it sounds like a semi truck and just goes Tsh. there are one two three four five vantage points plus whatever i see and hopefully we don't hit anything we are six inches away from that car put the air brakes on we're good sick <laughs> This, as you can imagine, was not a one-man project in six weeks. Uh, a bunch of crazy people helped me do it for scootering. Uh, so Chris Martin, he's our marketing manager, Christian Dean, Joe Voss, pretty much the entire Tilt crew, Michael Spaziri, my parents even showed up, uh, my girlfriend Jess, pretty much everybody. A guy, Carpenter, came in, one of my buddies, Will, from Anvil Goods. Uh, so thanks for everybody that helped and sorry if I forgot to give you a shout out. All right, thanks everybody for watching. Uh, shout out to the vaults, the whole crew, all the tilt guys that made it happen. Re we really appreciate it and it's pretty cool seeing all the great things happening in scootering. All right, we'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching.